and welcome to Mrs. Patnell's Maths Lesson 4. We have been dealing this week with doubling and then halving. As we do with every lesson, we're going to start off with a bit of counting. We're going to use our board to count today. We're going to count in fives first of all, using our funky tune that we use in our classroom. If we're counting in fives, remember there are only two columns we're interested in in the hundred square. The ones that end in a five and the ones that end in a zero. Okay, are you ready? <clears throat> 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Remember if we were carrying on from 100 and we were adding 5 on each time, we would say after 100, 105. And then 110, 115, and carry on from there. So you could challenge yourselves to go up to 200 today at home with your 100 squares, counting in fives. Okay, so we're also going to count in ones today. We're going to count to 70 this time. Yesterday was 60, now we're going to count to 70. Remember, on all the multiples of five, we're going to go high with our voices, and on all the multiples of 10, we're going to go low with our voices. Okay, are you ready? I plant in the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, already over halfway, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, like a cup of tea. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, nearly there, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, well done, that was quite easily done today. Fantastic. You can ask your um, adults to challenge you by having your 100 square in front of you, asking you to find certain numbers. Maybe find 63, find 22. Can you find 17? That kind of thing to test yourself out on your number recognition. Okay, also, I've got my maths mat here today. I don't know if you've copied this mat at home or if you found other cool ways of doing number of the day. But I'm going to say, let's imagine that number of the day today is 8. Okay, so first of all, I need to write 8 in the top here. So I'm going to write it there. If I have trouble thinking what does an 8 look like, I could use my 100 square to help me. I've got my 8 piece of Numicon here as well to help me out today. I know you haven't got this at home, but you can certainly draw 8 dots to help you, like my holes on my Numicon. Uh, I'm going to do a tally. Remember I said about tally yesterday? They come in groups of 5 and they look like a garden gate. So uh, for 8, I would have 1 two, three, four, and number five would be across like a garden gate. So I've done five lines, now I need to do six, seven, eight. So that's what eight would look like in tally. One garden gate of five lines and three more. Okay, this might help us out shortly with our adding sentence. Dots now as well. I'm gonna make my dots look like the dice dots. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. So I've got one in each corner and one in the middle, like five looks on a dice. And then one, two, three diagonal lines. So I've got five dots, five, six, seven, eight. This could help us with our adding sentence as well. So down here, I'm going to write out an adding sentence that's going to equal my number of the day, which is eight. Okay. Now I've got my eight piece of Numicon here. Now I could tackle the way I've done it with my tally and with my dots. So I had five dots plus three dots, okay? So I could show that making eight here. I've got my five Numicon. I'm going to put that on top of my eight. And I can see, can you see with the camera there, that I've got three dots left without 
Numic one on top. So if I pop that on the top there, I can see that my five and three make eight exactly. So I could write down here, five add three equals eight. Over here, I'm trying to make eight again as it's my number of the day. What two numbers can I add together to make my eight? Okay, now I could copy the five add three again, or I could challenge myself to find another way. So, using my Numicon here, my Numicon eight, I'm going to try, let's start with number six, smaller than eight, so I know I'm going to have to add some more to it to make my eight. I put my six on, I've got two holes left open, so I can put those on like that, and I know that my six and two are going to fit exactly on my eight. So I could write here, six and two come together to make eight. Okay, so that's my number of the day today. Right, now I'm going to show you a few of my pink cards. When I show it to you, on your whiteboard with your pens or your piece of paper, anything at all that you can write on at home, I want you to write the next number, okay? So for instance, if I show you number eight, the number I want you to write on your board will be the next number. The next number after eight would be one jump on the number line on the hundred square and that'd be nine. So the number on your board would be nine that you write. Okay, so the next number is what you write on your board. I'm going to start with numbers one to ten and then I'll go into the teen numbers. Okay, so this is your number, the number seven. Can you write on your board or your paper the next number? One more than seven. What number is one more than seven? One more. Okay, so one more than seven, if we look on our board here, is eight. So you should be writing on your boards the number eight. Let's do it on my board here as well. So that would be the number I write on my board, one more than seven. Okay. My next card I'm going to show you is going to be, let's have a shuffle through, let's move my Numicon, I'm going to show you five. You write the number that's one more than five, one more than five on your board. So one more than five would be one jump, six. So on your boards, you would write the number six. This is helping you with your number formation as well as your one more than on your board, okay? Let's do one more from the numbers one to 10. I'm going to show you the number, oh, I'm gonna show you the number 10. What number is one more than 10? Write it on your boards. So one more than 10. A bit tricky on the 100 square because we've got to jump down to the next row, which is 11. So on your boards, you need to write the number 11. Okay, your next one is going to come from the numbers 11 to 20. So I'm going to show you this number. Think, what is this number? And then what would be one more than this number? So this number is 13. One more than 13 would be 14. So on your board, you would write the one for one lot of 10 and four ones, 14 on your board, okay? Let's do another one from the T numbers. I'm going to show you this number. This number is 19. So one more than 19 would be, write this number on your board. One more than 19 would be 20. So write that onto your board, okay? 20 is two lots of 10 and zero ones, so 20, okay? So that would be what's written on your board there. Let's give that a little rub off now. Okay, so we're gonna move on today and um, we're going to look at doing our um, halving again today, okay? So I'm gonna tidy up my numbers here, and pop them over here. Now, with our halving, I want to show you that you don't, you don't, can't only just halve with numbers. You can halve oops, with shapes and with all sorts of everyday objects as well, okay? So I've got uh, some apples here with me today, okay? I've also got my sharp knife. So this might be, if you're going to try at home, an idea for your parents to help you with this. Or we have used knives in class before, so just make sure they're ones that aren't too sharp. Might make the job a little trickier, but uh, definitely do it with an adult with you, okay? So 
I've got my red apple here, okay? Now, if I'm talking about halving my red apple, let me show you an example of what wouldn't be halving, okay? So if I was to take my apple and I was to cut it, and I can see my core down there, if I was to cut it this side of my core, like this, if I look at my two pieces, I turn them sideways like this, okay? So that's some front ways. Turn them sideways so you can see the size of the shape behind them. This is not half. I haven't cut this apple into two halves. Why not? Because they're not equal halves, okay? This one you can see is much bigger than this one. So they're not equal. And if they're not equal, then I haven't cut them into halves, okay? So therefore, that's an example of not halving, but this one, I'm gonna use the core here to help me. So I'm gonna go right across the middle part and I'm gonna cut down all the way to the bottom, keeping my fingers out of the way of the knife. And then I'm going to show you this apple. I'm going to turn it sideways like this so you can see. Now, not all apples are completely symmetrical on both sides, so it can sometimes be tricky, but you can see that these ones are equal. So I have cut that apple into two equal pieces. So that is one half of this apple. I've cut it into halves. That is one half of an apple. Okay, so it was whole. I cut it exactly equal. So now for it, it's in halves. Okay, so that's my apple. I could also do it with shapes. So I've got a rectangle shape here. Okay, now if I was to fold it like this, because folding them is very helpful to work out if you've got half or not. This is an example of how it wouldn't be half of a rectangle, okay? So I folded it here, and I'm gonna draw a line down it so you can clearly see it on the camera. So I folded it like this. Now I've got one side here and one side here, and you can clearly see that this side is much bigger than this side. So I haven't halved my rectangle because they're not equal on both sides. One side is big and one side is much smaller, so it's not a half. This is not one half of my rectangle because it's far too big. Must be equal. So I would take my rectangle here. I would match the edges up so that those edges match those ones exactly. And then when I pinch them together and fold it, I can see that I have now divided it. If I draw my black line on, draw it down where the fold is you can see that this side is exactly the same size as that. So I have halved this rectangle because they're equal on both sides. So this bit on this side is one half of my rectangle, okay? So that's halving shapes and everyday objects as well. Right, so I want to introduce you today, as I said yesterday at the end of the lesson, to a new math symbol, okay? Now we know our adding symbol. Our adding symbol looks like this. Okay, we all recognise that one. We recognise our taking away or subtraction symbol, which is just that one line like this. Okay, but today, as I promised, I wanted to show you this math symbol. Okay, so a dot at the top, a line going through the middle, and then a dot at the bottom. This is known as the divide, the divide math symbol, okay? Looks a bit like two people, I think, laying on a bunk bed, okay? This is the divide symbol. And we're gonna look at this today because we are going to be dividing by two. Now, when we divide by two, we share equally into two groups. We are halving, it's the same thing. So dividing by two simply means the same as if someone says, halve this number, okay? so. I'll just show you how that would look in a number sentence and then you can certainly have a practice yourselves after this lesson at halving a few more numbers and writing it as a dividing by two sentence, okay? So if I go back to my coloured teddy bears here, we'll go to one that um, I know you guys have been halving because I've seen some of your tapestry videos which are fantastic. So we'll start with one of those numbers that you'll be used to seeing because I want to focus more on the writing of the divide sentence and not so much on the process of the halving, okay? So I'm going to put myself, let's count those teddy bears. I'm gonna to touch them as I count so I don't miss out on any. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to halve six today. So when I'm halving six, it's the same as dividing by two. I'm dividing into one, two groups, okay? So that's what I mean by dividing by two, and that's the same as halving. 
So I've got my six. I'm going to start on this side and then share to this side, which if it's an even number, I should be able to finish on this side because I've gone here first and here second. So let's see if it works. So one on this side, 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 and yes, I've got enough, so it's an even number to come and finish on this side, okay? So one half of six is what's on one side of the plate or in one of your bowls, if you've been using bowls, which is a fantastic idea. I've got one, two, three. So half of six is three, but let me show you how to write that as a dividing by two question, okay? Right, so... I would write the six that I started off with because I had six teddy bears in total. And then I'm gonna use that special little two people in a bunk bed math sign, dividing. And when I'm halving, I'm always dividing by two. No other number, just always by two when I'm halving because I've got two groups, okay? And they must be equally shared. Remember, I can't grab a handful and put them on one side and then only have one on the other. They must be shared equally. So six divided by two, or the same as six being halved, half of six equals one, two, three, okay? And that would be my number sentence, okay? Let's try that one more time with a different number so you know how to write these divide sentences. And then I'm gonna leave you having a go with a few of your own. And I know you've been busy in my class because I've seen some amazing tapestry videos today which has made my day. It's fantastic to see you all so busy. It really has lifted my spirits. So I'm going to start now with, and remember I can't halve an odd number. Certainly not something we deal with in reception, okay? We don't half odd numbers at all at this point in our learning careers. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's put this little guy there, and eight. Now because it's an even number I should be able to start on this side and my last one should be shared on the other side so they've got equal amounts. So let's check that out. One for you, one for this side, one for you, one for this side, one for you, one for this side, one for you, on that side, and one on this side. So I managed to share out equally. Every side got the same amount. So I had eight all together. So I'm gonna write that in my dividing by two sentence. I started with eight, okay? I've divided, I've split them equally by two groups, divided by two, equals and now my answer will be just like when we are halving we wrote our half of sentence will be to check what's on one side of the plate one two three four so eight divided by two divided by two equal groups equals and it's the answer to what's on one side of the plate one half of them and the answer is four Okay, and that's how I write a dividing by two number sentence, okay? So you can try some at home when you finish watching this video. Try even numbers, okay? I mean, you can try odd ones and you can see how it won't work. You won't be able to share them exactly by two groups equally. But uh, if you can write me out some sentences that involve even numbers, that would be fantastic. Okay, so... I think probably uh, we'll end our lesson there for today, okay? We've dealt with halving of, of everyday objects like apples, we've dealt with halving of shapes, we've looked at number of the day, done a bit of counting and worked out how we can say halving is also dividing by two. So have a practice of a few more number sentences today guys and do keep posting it on Tapestry because it's been fabulous to see it and to see you working so hard and I will see you again tomorrow. Thank you then, bye bye.